Hello. Okay, so thanks for the introduction. Uh, well, let's move to the first slides actually. So uh, what we what I'm gonna talk about today. So first, I'll start with an introduction about the problem. Uh, for those who are not uh, familiar with it and are not following the discussions on the mailing list. Uh, and also uh, for those who are not familiar with PowerPC, and so I will talk a little bit about the long double format uh, in, in in this architecture and how the Float 128 uh, API relates to this long double transition that we're talking about because uh, I might get a little confusing uh, for beginners uh, as I was when I started to do this. Uh, and then I will move to the first uh, attempt that I did at uh, addressing this problem and uh, why, uh, what, the re what were the reasons why this was discarded. And then I will present the, the other attempt that I did. Uh, and this is what's been developed right now. And also uh, the MABIs, which uh, how does this relate to, to the GLIPC work? So this is a switch from, from GCC. And how does this relate to all of this? And afterwards, uh, I'll start with some uh, uh, explanations about how this affects the math uh, library and how, how the transition works for it and what impacts it has on the namespace. Uh, and after explaining a little bit about the math library, I'll talk about the I.O. functions. And uh, uh, similarly to what uh, I have mentioned uh, in the beginning, uh, I had a first attempt which was discarded for some reasons. I'll explain uh, what reasons that were and what feedback I got and now how I'm doing, uh, how we are doing the, the transition in, in a second attempt. And also uh, at the end I'll talk a little bit about uh, how this long double transition is actually helping us. Well, it's it's giving us a, uh, an opportunity to fix uh, other problems that uh, are there in glibc and uh, have been there for some time and we're also trying to make this right too and then to a conclusion. So, uh, on PowerPC, long double uh, has many formats and so for those who don't know, uh, at the first uh, port of the PowerPC architecture, that we had no uh, little Indian support. We only had uh, 32 bits and 64 bits uh, PowerPC. And at the first implementation, they had a long double format, which was the same as double. This is uh, on GLIPC version 2.3. And then on GLIPC uh, version 2.4, this has been changed to have a different format. Most of you already know that it's the IBM long double format, sometimes called, uh, referred to as double double. And uh, well, if you open the the, the the shared libraries on these uh, on machines that have uh, new enough glibc, it's going to show that you have two symbols for uh, many functions. Uh, well, for all the functions that have to deal with uh, long double type. And then on purpose 64 bits little Indian, which came after. Uh, this glibc versions that I mentioned previously. So it came about at the time as glibc 2.17, but even though uh, the 64 bits little Indian version also has uh, the double double, I mean the long double with 64 bits format available. Uh, it doesn't have uh, the same compact symbols that you'll find in the 32 bits and big Indian 64 bits versions but uh, the support is available there. And uh, how you get this, uh, you use uh, header magic, which does redirections when it's uh, trying to use long double with 64 bits. Uh, so, and this is uh, the version which I already mentioned that was used at the time, 2.17, uh, when uh, Purposey Little Engine was introduced. And uh, right now, uh, the work we're doing, we are uh, targeting the next version of TLIPC, which is 2.29, and we are working on the transition to make long double have the IEEE uh, 
uh, long double uh, format. Okay, and how does this uh, relate to the Flow 128 that I mentioned previously? So Flow 128 is a, it is a new type. It has, it comes from a different standard. So the long double type is, uh, it's, it's, it's in ISO C, but uh, Flow 128 is not there yet. And it comes from that standard, uh, TS18661-3. And uh, the reason why this was uh, relevant uh, at the time we started the thinking about changing the long double format is because this uh, the float and uh, API, it's similar in the sense, similar to long double in the sense that uh, it has many functions uh, that uh, do the same operations on, on this floating point uh, values. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the way the, the glibc code is structured in the code repository, uh, we have uh, for platforms that already have IEEE long double, they use uh, the code for them is stored in this directory ldbl-128. It's under sysdep directory. And uh, so the float 128 implementation, even for PowerPC, which does not uh, regular, regularly uses this director, directory. So on PowerPC, when you have uh, float 128, you are going to reuse uh, the code that is in this directory. So a lot of uh, reusing has been done for this. And uh, now for the uh, transition of the long double type, so uh, not for not talking about float 128 anymore. We since we already have the the functions there uh, in in glibc for power. Since we already have the functions there uh, to deal with uh, float 128, we can reuse those functions uh, for the long double for for long double types after the transition, uh, and that. Uh, can only be done with some new exported symbols, which I'll cover uh, some of them. Okay, so uh, this was, uh, I mentioned that I was going to talk about something that I tried to do, but did not work well. So the first uh, attempt that I uh, tried uh, was uh, late last year. Uh, I proposed some, I proposed some patches uh, and Joseph here, he asked me uh, what I was trying to do, and I explained to him uh, that I was trying to uh, make PowerPC 64 bits little engine stop using that director over there, LDBL128 IBM, which is the one that contains the code for the double double format, and start to starting to imply LDBL128 by default. Uh, did, uh, so, uh, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with the concept of the implies files, so uh, architectures that want to use uh, some directors in glibc, they have some mechanism where you just write in the uh, implies files, well, please use this directory instead of that other. So I w my plan was to remove the LDBA128 IBM uh, directory from the implies files, at least not remove it, but move it towards the end so that we would use the LDBA128, which is for IEEE long double uh, first, but uh, yeah, that's the the idea behind it. But they had some um, problems with it. I mean, sorry. Uh, I'm t uh, before I talk about the problems, uh, what well, what was my idea to to do it like this? In my op in my opinion, at the time, it would make uh, PowerPC 64 bits little Indian more similar to other architectures, and that would uh, give us some benefit in the long run, like uh, maintenance effort being uh, less. That was my uh, idea at the time. And also, uh, we could reuse the aliasing mechanism. I wrote it there, float128 API as aliases, because other architectures that uh, have float128, the API, even though they already already had IEEE long double, they so they had the long double as IEEE, and they just export the new API with some aliasing mechanisms that also Joseph uh, wrote this. But then uh, it was pointed out to me that uh, one big, a big uh, disadvantage of this would be that we would have a lot of uh, symbols uh, being renamed 
magically, then it's not uh, so interesting because you can uh, lose uh, control of things. Uh, besides that, uh, it would diverge uh, a little bit uh, for PC, other PowerPC platforms from the little engine implementation. And uh, I would need a lot of extra make file targets for uh, keeping the, the old implementation available. And that's, uh, I guess, the, the hardest part. I was, I was going to have to rewrite a lot of make files, like the math, uh, the make file for the math functions would have to be rewritten, or at least uh, have a lot of duplication of um, targets. OK, so like, that was discarded. And uh, we are still uh, having at the LDPL uh, 128 IBM in the implies files as it was. And but well, bef before I get into the second, uh, let me start with the second one actually. So we we have a new directory, the LDPL 128 IBM compats directory. This is already in GLIPC, but not uh, implied by, not yet implied. But it's. Uh, well, the, the reason for this is that uh, we can add some new files in there and some overrides. So if you want to have, uh, um, if you want to define new symbols, you just uh, add new files which override the files from the LDPI 128 IBM, and then you can uh, have new symbols there. Uh, we can make new file, new make file targets, and it actually this should be. Uh, to the to to the site, uh, it easy the it eases the increment uh, the addition of uh, new uh, functions in target. So uh, that's the reason for this directory. And uh, alongside with it, we have uh, we had to create to separate actually the sysdeps directory for the 64 bits little engine architecture. We we used to have uh, the six, all 64 bits uh, files in the same directory, but then it, it kind of started to be uh, hard to separate uh, those two architectures because they are getting very different uh, from each other. So by having this uh, new directory, the PowerPC64 uh, forward slash LE, this contains uh, all the code for Little Indian, and then the, the, the topmost directory can contain all the code that is uh, can be reused in both uh, by both Begin and Little Indian 64 bits. And uh, the reason, another reason for that, another another advantage of having this direct directory, is that we were having some problems with the processor hierarchy. So if you, in the old uh, older code, if you implied uh, power nine, you could, uh, if there was no no uh, sorry no optimized version of uh, power nine, you would end up having using a power six. Uh, for instance, the Power 6 uh, uh, implementation, even though you had a better one for for Lido Engine, but the hierarchy was not done correctly. So this allowed us to fix this issue too. And so what I mentioned about the MABI before is that by default, uh, current GCC co GLIPC code uh, is compiled with a dash MABI equals IBM long double. And uh, if we keep doing this, it's, it has this advantage that it's coherent with the uh, fact that we are implying LDPI 128 IBM uh, in, in all three architectures, and this is good. And it's also good because uh, all the print and scan functions, they are built having in mind that long double has the IBM long, long double format. I'll get back to the printf and scanf. Uh, when I explain how this how the transition is being done for them, but the thing here is that uh, the new implementation is going to reuse what's been done for the float 128 implementation. So the, the print functions, the print and scan functions, they have to deal with long double in a different way, and this is already implemented uh, because of the float 128 uh, API. And since this is already implemented, it's OK if we keep uh, building these files as we were for a long time with IBM long double. On the other hand, if we switch the MABI uh, to having a IEEE long double uh, arguments to it, 
by default in all glibc uh, builds, then uh, we would get we would get a perhaps a better uh, testing because uh, a lot of the not everything uh, in glibc is uh, not every bit of glibc is tested. So when you have tests that default to this new uh, uh, long tuple format, well, if you change the default uh, uh, MABI that you use in your tests, then all the tests are going to, to well, the tests that's kind of, uh, the tests that are not necessarily written for the transition, they are going to test the transition. So that's the, that's what the statement, the first statement in the second block means. And also this uh, would help with testing uh, headers. And uh, another uh, advantage of this, of having a MABI by default to IEEE long double is that if uh, some new routines were added to, to, DLIB, to DLIBC, GLIBC, sorry, and then they would automatically use the new format. Uh, not sure if this is uh, actually a, a pro. And also, uh, this is uh, more of on a subjective, lev subjective level, I guess, but it will be coherent with the GCC ABI because uh, you correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the plan is to make the MABI default to IEEE long double, and it would make sense to have this in GLEPC too. And by default, I guess. I mean. Okay, so moving. Uh, so if uh, if you have any questions, I didn't mention you. Feel free to interrupt me. Okay, so uh, how did it? Uh, how did? How is it working with uh, libm functions? So. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, we are not doing this exactly the same thing that was doing in the first transition. We're not providing uh, uh, new symbols, uh, new default symbols for for the new long double type. Uh, what we are doing is we are uh, during the build of user programs, we redirect uh, function calls that might be calling functions that deal with long double uh, types. Then we redirect them during build time uh, through header, hedge, uh, header magic. And we redirect this to functions that have the suffix IEEE 128, which are the new exported new exports that I mentioned uh, previously. And uh, with this new export, we are uh, trying to uh, we are not adding new uh, exports that have the F128 uh, suffix to it because that would uh, kind of mix with the flow 128 work. And we uh, we want to make this uh, very clear what that this is not about float 128. So no new uh, exports like this because there are some already. So if they're there, we might uh, use them. And this is true for some helper functions, and we'll see them. Uh, besides this, uh, uh, IEEE 128 suffix uh, for some of the functions for the next toward functions because they have uh, origin and destination. Uh, type, we might end up with something like uh, L to IEEE 128, uh, which I'm, I'm going to summarize all the, the suffixes when I talk about namespace pollution. Okay, and so that's what I mentioned about the uh, helper functions. Uh, helper functions for these classification macros there, so FB, classify, sign bit, uh, these functions, they uh, uh, I don't know if all of them or some of them are implemented in, in math.h and uh, they are type generic because you can use them with uh, whatever um, argument you pass to them, it can be double, float, whatever. So it, it has to, to, to select during build time which of the internal implementations or which of the these helper functions it's going to call. So if it's a uh, long double typed variable that's being passed to one of these functions, then if you're compiling with the old ABI, then it has to, com to, to call a function with the L suffix. But if, it's, uh, if the code is being compiled uh, with the new ABI, then you have to call uh, one function that knows how to deal with uh, IBM long double. So it will, in this case, call these functions with F128 because the functions are already there. So we're not adding a new 
export with IEEE 128. But those are the only exceptions to the rule of having IEEE 128 at the end. And also, uh, for these functions, for these narrowing functions, uh, we already have some exports that have the float and uh, parlance for, uh, yeah, I, I would say that. So if you have, you have that F32 and F64, then the name of the function, and then IEEE 128. So if you're narrowing from a long double type to a smaller type, then you're not using F and D for float and double, but you're using F32 and F64 because that's, uh, these functions are available with this name. So this is a summary of what's been added to the exported functions. So this is, uh, you have, uh, as I mentioned, a lot of functions with the IEEE suffix and some with F128 at the end. Uh, even though with the, so the F128 functions, if you don't have the, the double unders, underscores at the beginning, they're not available if you're not uh, using the, the macro that exposes these functions. This is only exposed if you, if you define the macros from, from that standard that I mentioned before, the TS18661. Uh, if, you, if you define a macro in this, if you define uh, the macros that it requests, this requests, then you get the F128 uh, functions. But these uh, functions with the leading underscore, they, uh, they are there anyway. So in this, in this case, we use them. So this is uh, what I had to say about how this uh, work is going to add more symbols and things that uh, could, uh, well, they're polluting the namespace. OK, so I'm back to, to redirections with libm. So actually, Tulio asked me to add this slide here because he did most of the job related to these uh, redirections. So uh, he was having some trouble while writing the redirections for, for the finite function. Those, uh, so he was having trouble to to use the math call that he, math calls that h this is missing an s uh, math calls that h uh, header, and he started uh, by splitting this file into a math redir that h, and then with some feedback from Joseph. Uh, then we are actually getting rid of, of, of both of them. Uh, MathRedir never made it into the code base, and MathFinite becoming uh, ever smaller, and then we'll end up only with MathCalls.h. So that uh, should be, make things easier for us. And also, uh, he, had, uh, he had some troubles with some multi-level macro expansions, and he was like, oh, is this uh, the right thing to do? Should we... Uh, actually do all of this with macros or should we maybe move to some other uh, language? So should we maybe uh, use, some, with, use some Python to, to write these redirections and generate C code? I don't know. Uh, but that's uh, something that we had in mind. OK, uh, and so this is what I have to say, had to say about math functions. Uh, and now for the IO functions, again, uh, something that I tried to do that's been discarded. So just uh, explain why this was discarded and what was the idea to use this. So I sent this to, to the mailing list uh, in mid, uh, mid this year. And what I was trying to do, I was trying to basically build print and scan functions more than once. Once with the AIM ABI set to IBM long double and then again, build it again with IEEE long double. This, this was going to generate a lot of symbols that was not that were not necessary, and uh, that was uh, I needed to split some files because they were uh, I wanted to have the, the functions there and the, the alias definitions, so I get the symbols to a different file. So a lot of uh, work that was not uh, not very wise, and I also had some trouble with. Uh, internal function duplication and name clashes when the, you have two, two functions with the same name. And I'm trying to build a file twice. So uh, yeah, a very bad idea. And uh, I'm not getting too much into why I did this, but uh, the, the correct solution is this one. Uh, with, this is what we're trying to work with. 
So Zach Weinberg, uh, he posted some patches to the mailing list in March. Uh, these are not yet integrated, but they move the internal details of these functions. Of, I'm sorry, they move the internal details of what is the format of the long double type to internal functions. So you have the VF printf internal, for instance, and, and the other one uh, listed there. And these new internal functions, they have a parameter, uh, the mode flex parameter, and this, this uh, tells this internal function which is the format of the long double type that is being, uh, it which in which format the long double type should be treated. So, and uh, it has another benefit. It's not uh, because it makes uh, my job easier to, to, to do the long double transition. It also has the benefit of removing the use of some TLS variables that uh, would select uh, which is the uh, long double format. This was uh, this is how it's it, it is currently done. So before you call the one of those print and scan functions, you change a a variable in the TLS, and this this variable is what uh, tells the function uh, which is the format of long double. So this is going to be uh, refactored with his patches. And you, we get rid of this, uh, this this TLS thing. And uh, so for this to get implemented in, and integrated, there are many. Uh, yes, please. Oh, <coughs> I looked at the exact uh, exact patches, and I think they are okay even for the callback functions for custom printf format specifiers. I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Um, uh, glibc printf has um, extension, uh, su support for extensions like uh, writing your own format specifier handlers. Oh, I didn't, mean, uh, format, I didn't mean the format string. Are you talking about this? Uh, no, uh, the, the, po the point is uh, the, someone might want to write a um, a format specifier for long double and needs to know which printf function was called by the application so that it knows the format of the printf argument. But and the, the, the kind of, uh, Zach's patches deal with that correctly, I think, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's possible to do with the current interface for the, the float 128 transition. Well, uh, I'm not sure if I, if I got it correctly. So you're saying that the mode, mode flex is not enough for uh, defining a new long double format? The mode, no, the mode flag is, eno is enough, but uh, it's, it, it's not passed to the callback functions for the format specifier extensions that the user might have created. OK, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I, I, dealt with, I dealt with this. Maybe maybe this is something that is missing in my brain. Okay. Yeah, we can look at it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I'm not because uh, the thing is, I so uh, I have a branch that's been public. It's public now, uh, and it just uses uh, Zach's patches, and it's allowed. Uh, it's able to to change the formats of long table. Uh, I, I'm I'm not sure if I understood what you're saying. We can can we discuss this later? Maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is. Uh, I was saying that uh, for. We, there are some things uh, that are not uh, correct yet uh, regarding uh, these patches that uh, Zach posted, and I'm um, will I'm planning to to work on them so that it can be integrated and I can use them. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, I just have to add new uh, flags, uh, uh, new macros that can be used with these flags, and uh, they help me have the long double format print the, well, they can help me the print, have print and scan functions, uh, print and scan uh, long double values the correct way. And so, uh, I'll move back a bit, so maybe this uh, will answer your question. So, during the float 128 implementation, uh, because uh, 
the Flow 228 API does not have uh, new uh, specifiers to add to the format string. So you, uh, the only way you can print a Flow 128 number, uh, a number in Flow 128 type, is to use the str from f128 function. And the way this is implemented in glibc, so the str from function, it always calls some functions from the printf uh, land. So what I did uh, in the Flow 28 implementation, I added this new structure member uh, is binary 128 to the printf.h uh, header file. And I added some code to these two guys over there who actually convert a floating point into a string. And then the SDR from F128 can call them by setting this uh, struct member to one. And as I mentioned, uh, there is no support for printing flow 28 using printf functions. Uh, and now for adding support for, for long double with the IEEE uh, long double type, then we have to have the support in printf. And since the code is already there for uh, printing numbers uh, with stir from F128, then we just want to reuse the same code and uh, deal with it uh, in the printf uh, function. So before, so before this patches, the printf function will never guess what is the long double type. Well, it would guess for the, the old uh, API, but not for flow 28. But now uh, it will have some new code in printf to parse the, the variable arguments. And it's going to use, uh, it's going to behave as if it was dealing with a flow 28 type in our perspective, in the PowerPC uh, perspective, because the code is there and it's basically the same uh, algorithm. And it's, this is true also for strf1, uh, which I didn't do, with, it was Raji that did this. Is it in line with what we're, you're asking? Florian, no? Okay. So, and for SCONF, this things are the other way around. So, the thing with uh, SCONF is that SCONF calls str to f or str to l, so it's it's inverted. Uh, so it's uh, kind of easier for this transition because. Uh, we already have the str to f128, and then it's in scanf we only have to uh, prepare the call to to the other function. So, if we, if the code is being compiled with uh, IBM long double, then it calls str str f. No, I'm sorry, str l, because that's what uh, the str l do for PowerPC. And if the code is being compiled for IEEE long double, then it calls stir to F128. And it also has the same problem as uh, str from, which has to parse the, the variable arguments. OK, and then this was uh, brought up in, in, in the mailing list that many functions did not have support for, for, for the first transition when uh, long double stopped being double and became other things. So this is not specific to PowerPC. This is for every architecture that used to have uh, long double uh, with, the lo with the double type and then became something else. Uh, so some of the functions in these headers, uh, argb and whatever, uh, they have to deal with do uh, long double uh, variables. And they were not doing this properly. So and we never saw this because there were no test cases for this. So I started the implementation, uh, again, as a, a suggestion from Joseph, uh, by writing new test cases uh, that would, and since these test cases, uh, they are not specific to the transition, he asked me to move them out of the transition directory, which I presented previously. So just move it out of the sysdeps directory and, put it into the non sysdeps directory so that can be reused for the default long double and then it will also be re, uh, uh, used again for the uh, cases where we want long double to have the same format as double. Uh, this code, the code is already there. It's in, uh, the, the code for testing, the default long double is in, is, is in Leipzig Alpha. It's been uh, reviewed but not yet integrated. 
and the code for reusing this for long for long double the same as double uh, it's there in my public range but it only makes sense to add this after we after I have uh, added Zach's patches to the LibC Alpha and sorry not to LibC Alpha to to the to the code base and I also have patches to add the support for these new functions with long double with 64 bits and it is it is exactly the same thing for uh, IEEE long double. So yeah, so this is not there yet, as I mentioned, because uh, it depends on Zach's patches. And uh, also, uh, Tulio noticed, uh, so this is also a suggestion from Tulio to bring here, uh, redirections for, in, 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 his, uh, in his tests, he noticed that uh, the redirections for all long double functions were not correct. And, and I asked him, uh, so how does Excel work with work around this? And well, we're not sure. Uh, maybe because uh, they use their own math library. So uh, this is something that I don't have an answer right now. But uh, this is uh, this has come up uh, in conversations with him. Gabriel, one more question about uh, uh, the 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 L .h header and the other headers. Um, I think we need to call fxprintf from those functions to support wide-oriented streams instead of doing the conversion locally. Okay. And uh, is your, I think I posted a patch for that. Is, is, is your code based on that, or is it still using the local conversion code or not handling the situation correctly at all? Yeah, I, I, I think I also revealed your patch. And yes, it's using... Uh, uh, the code that you wrote, I had to do some uh, uh, some fixing after I rebased. But yes, it's using. So our code. We, we need to pa uh, pass the the mode argument through FX printf. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Yeah, indeed. Okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, great. Thanks. Okay, uh, I guess I already covered this. Yeah, I did. So ah, maybe this is uh, answering your questions because uh, this new internal, f this, this, these functions, these internal whatever functions, they, they are also not in, in, in the current code base. They're in my public branch. And they are built on top of Zach's patches. And they do this uh, prepare for, for calling the, the FX printf and other uh, when, when, when needed, right? So I think that these functions, the RHP, Function they, they call fx printf so they're going to uh, divert the, the the execution to call the fx printf function. Okay, uh, I'm I'm reaching the end of this presentation. So uh, so uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, currently under development, and uh, uh, some of the the most of the patches are right now, right now uh, in my in my uh, development branch. It's made public, but it, I took some time to, to publish this because I didn't know it, if, it, if it was going to work. And that's uh, perhaps the reason why uh, I made uh, those two mistakes, is two mistakes that I mentioned, uh, because of uh, taking a bit too long to, to make this public. Uh, so yeah, mea culpa. And so we're currently targeting uh, glibc 2.29 for this, and uh, as I I think it's pretty clear now that it's only for the little Indian version of PowerPC, and it's built on top of Load 128. So that's what I uh, had for today. If we, uh, if we have more questions, you can make now. If you don't, maybe I have some backup slides to. So I have a question about um, this one design decision you mentioned earlier that there should be sort of even once the transition is done, the default symbol version would still be the IBM long double, if I got it correctly, and in the default symbol as exported from the glibc so file, right? And, and you would do the transformation to get the new function only from the header file by basically actually calling a function Symbol with a different name, right? That's what we have, yeah. So, just <coughs> to, to, to make sure that sort of the 
consequences are understood, th this would mean that <coughs> anybody who doesn't use the header but just adds a prototype of their own will get, in effect, the wrong version of the function, right? Yeah, you're correct. That's all. Yeah, maybe this needs uh, fixing. Yeah, indeed. So, do we know if that happens in code out there? No. Disk? Yeah, then, then this needs fixing. Yeah. Because uh, if you look at, uh, if you take my branch and you <laughs> a list of symbols being uh, exported with read elf, then you'll see that it's only one, uh, only the the old two, for instance, sign elf functions and uh, sign out symbols, you, you still have only two of them. So yeah, yeah, so yeah, if this is a problem, this needs fixing, yeah. We don't have tests for this in GLibc, I guess. I guess that uh, because all the tests in GLibc, they use uh, the our headers. So yeah, maybe this is something that can be changed as well. So is there a reason for not doing it the same way so that if you have a new system in GLibc that the sign L by default would be the new version and if you want the old one you, you have to do something different there? No, if you, uh, if you want the old version? If, if, and yeah, indeed. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So we, I would have to have uh, some reader. We, could, we would have to have a redirection for the, the old ABI, right? For the IBM ABI, yeah. yeah that's also true, yeah. I, I have one question. Um, assuming somebody had binary uh, data stored, how would one actually go about uh, writing a conversion program from the old to the new format? Data, you mean? Yes, data. Well, I don't know. I, I don't even know how this was done in the first time. But yeah, I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Maybe, maybe before this is uh, pushed out, it might be good to publish an example program to do that. Yeah. I mean, you, you probably try to add the two long doubles together to a new float and then write it out again, something like that or whatever. Whichever thing you have as the default type, code that doesn't use the headers will be getting things wrong if it's using something else as the type. So, well, for Fortran, ultimately the compiler will probably need to have no about the functions and to be able to do an appropriate set of redirections itself for the functions defined by Fortran or something like that. Generically, in principle, you could, if you wanted to have a, a compiler that strictly followed the standard rules about allowing to call the functions, declaring them themselves, you'd have a header that's implicitly pre-included or included with the dash include option that uses a series of redefine x name pragmas. So far that's not something that's been done, but we do have this pragma that would allow such a pre-included header to be created if wanted. I, I don't know. Uh, are, are you suggesting these? Are, I, I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. Is there a question there? Okay. Hi. So, how does this deal with Power 8? Uh, Power 8, it, has the, uh, it does have the float 128 format. You would just uh, pass it in vector registers exactly the same as on hardware. That does support float 128, right? Uh, but it does not, not have any of the, of the operations. So uh, in the compiler, we have uh, 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 emulation thingies. So there's, there's a call for, for emulating anything. Uh, but it, but you, I, I assume you don't want to have that uh, in, lib, in libc for everything, because it's a lot slower than the real instructions, especially in the far future. You, you're not, you, don't, you don't care about power 8 anymore, right? OK. So, so how does Libc uh, deal with this? For Power 8 or Power 9? Yes, yes. Well, well, does it support Power 8 at all, ever? Float 128, uh, I triple 128 for Power 8, does it support it at all? Or? Yeah, it supports, uh, it's supported the same way that Float 128 is supported. So, as you mentioned, with the right. emulation so routine. So, so it's emulated. Yeah, right. indeed. Yeah. So how does it... Uh, we didn't have to care about this because... Uh, right, but, but if you have the same library, 
right? Uh -huh. uh, 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 like for example, how a distribution distributes a library, right? Binary. Uh, so, uh, so it has to run on both a power eight and a power nine, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, so how does it distinguish between the two? How does it uh, do it good fast code yeah, to okay. power nine? It, it currently doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. So it's always the emulation code now, basically. If it's built with MCP. Yeah. Right. You need you need a separate library. Okay. Just it depends. Yeah. Separate. It depends on how. You if you don't have a separate library, it is also the case that libgcc is using ifuncs right now with power nine versions of these operations. So there'll still be the indirection, but it will call a libgcc function that, via the ifunc mechanism, then uses the hardware instruction rather than emulation. Yeah, but we, we don't have these I functions yet, so, yeah. yeah. Well, we have them in libgcc, so, so glibc will call the libgcc functions if it's built for power 8, and if it's running on power 9, then that will mean those libgcc functions will not end up using emulation, they'll use the hardware functionality. It's not emulation, but there's still some level of indirection calling the function. Yeah. Florian? Uh, back to the matter of uh, redirections in the header file. Um, there's also the problem that um, there are non GCC consumers of such header files and yeah. non compiler consumers. So if we do a preprocessor only redirection for these functions, like we do for printf as a fallback, I think, for supporting the ISO C99 features, um, then that might not be visible to the to those consumers, and that's something to consider. And Jonathan brought up the, the point about built-ins. So I think for GCC, if you redirect the the the, the actual name, then the built-in is also redirected. But that doesn't happen for Clang, so that's probably something you need to test directly and see if, if what happens for built-in functions with Clang. Yeah, okay. Okay, no more questions? Well, my plan was to have this in 2.29, yeah. and there are more things that have been... And 2.29 uh, is what, fall or something? Yeah, the end of the year. Uh, it's January. January. Yeah. End of January, yeah. Good luck. <laughs> Yeah, this is that. This is my topmost priority. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Do you think we will have this ready before the freeze in January? And this is something else we can continue on the BOF because it would be really nice to test the full build, get it into build many glibcs and things like that so that we can test it on real hardware. Yeah, I see. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, I have this in a, in a public range. It's missing yeah. one of the functions and, and some header redirections. And my plan is to, uh, before this meeting was planned to, uh, have this for 2.29, I think we would have time uh, starting with Zex patches, yes. But uh, now we have some other uh, things to to add, so uh, I would have to think. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, there's there's this, then there's, um, you know, what's happening for lib standard C++ for the same things, and then after that we can do the full toolchain bootstrap and, 
you know, transition temporarily something to test it. There's no other blockers. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm just curious how, how much runway we have again for hitting the, the 229 freeze. And there are some, some distro specific scheduling things as well because, um, you know, Fedora 30, we could transition to, um, you know, IEEE long double uh, being float 128. Um, and they have like a mass rebuild in January, early January, after GLibc hits freeze. So if everything is okay by that point, then their mass rebuilds could transition the the PPC64 LE distro entirely over, and then that that would be a, a great thing to do. Um, obviously, in coordination with IBM and and making sure that that would work. Um, so if we had it a little bit beforehand, right, it would be good. I've, obviously, we always try to have everything frozen before that, the, you know, the, the pre-one-month freeze in January, but, you know, sometimes it's hard to hit that. So if, like, November time frame, yeah. Yeah, do okay. you think that's doable? Well, December? Uh, if, if, the, if the new things don't uh, bring us uh, very uh, weird surprises, then I, I think it is, yeah. But... Uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid of surprises now because of the new things that were brought here. <laughs> they, yeah. I know there were a lot of slides that were like, did this, failed, rejected, tried this, succeeded. Did this, failed, rejected, tried this, succeeded. So I, it, it, it's something that, you know, this transition happens very infrequently. Like, it's like the second time we've tried a transition like this in GLibc, and it's hard to know what's going to go wrong. And I see Bill Smith there just like nodding his head, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, it's not easy. Um, so if you were to comment on, if, if you could, uh, like, other than glibc, how are the other pieces going? Are they, like, yellow status or green status? I'm, I'm curious, maybe from Jonathan or someone else, how are the libstandard C++ transitions going? If we still have a minute left. So I just spoke with uh, John Wakeley just before this call, and, or before this uh, talk here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a call anymore for me. Uh, <laughs> And uh, he, he was uh, saying that the stuff that he's been working on, he's hoping to try to get it to land next week. And uh, then we'll take a look at it and see what we can uh, do. But that's the lib standard C++ piece is looking pretty strong at this point, I think. So, uh, and in, inside GCC, we have a couple of little bugs here and there, but they're nothing particularly uh, bothersome. So I'm not seeing any particular issues in getting the GCC side of this within this time frame that you're talking about. So if you wanted something early to look at in GCC 9 trunk, I think we'll be able to, to handle that, so. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if that means we don't get to test it in Fedora 30, and it has to be Fedora 31. Um, I, I don't know if Jakob is here or not, but um, mostly because I, I think you're saying this stuff's gonna land in GCC 9, and I don't know if we're using 9 in F30, or if it's still gonna be GCC 8. And F30, and it's not till F31 that nine gets used. But I don't have the schedule. Say again. Okay, so that, that's what I'm looking at for the other people who do the compiler transition in Fedora. So, do so you think in F30 we transition to nine, and then we'll have all the pieces in nine plus glibc plus substandard C++, and then we'll, we'll be able to test the destroy out with uh, with the transition, which would be great. I'd love to, to pipe clean everything else out. Well, this is a little bit of a surprise, I guess, uh, <laughs> as well. So, Lib Fortran, uh, surprise. <laughs> well, it's got real 16. The different variants of log double. If. And then there's this point about because the Fortran compiler doesn't use C headers, if it's generating calls to the libm functions directly, it will need to know about the appropriate names to use. Now, there are some architectures, I think, where GCC already knows about appropriate redirections for standard library functions in particular cases, but that would need adding in this particular case. Actually, I would I would have to check uh, to see what we're actually doing on on power. Um, usually, what we use for 16-byte reals is uh, the libquad math. 
if, so, if, um, you use the, if you use the correct compiler flags, then you get float 128. Okay. 128. That's it. So it knows about libquadmath. Now, of course, since that's fairly obsolescent, it would be nice for it to know about using these TS18661 functions instead of the old libquadmath names. And then it could also learn if it wants, you could use these I to triple E one to eight suffixes on power. Yeah, I, I agree that that would be ideal. <laughs> yeah. So, but libquadmath should work today on power, right? It should do the right thing. So, I mean, maybe it's not the nicest way, but it should work. Really big problems in the compiler anyway, but it will it will work anyway. Although there are really big problems, just don't try to mix I triple E one twenty eight and double double. Sorry? Well, uh. <laughs> ADA has long, long float as well, and I think it, uh, the mapping for that has to change as well. So I don't know what, what they are going to do there. If you use, uh, use the correct compiler flags to select the format, you get that, that format. Yeah, but and it then, then you, then you need uh, two co two versions of the runtime library. Yeah. Oh. We'll, we'll just have to multi multi it, right? In general, I think we're trying to. In general, I think we may be trying to avoid multi libbing the GCC libraries. So, I think the GCC libraries, glibc, are generally get probably supposed not to be multi libbed for log double and they get built with the compiler option saying disable the linker checks for consistency but if you don't use this special option to disable the object attributes for consistency then you get the objects marked as requiring a particular log double format and the static link will then complain if you mix objects that are built for the different formats. Oh, I don't think Olivier is in the room who could shed light on Ada. Anyway, um, it's now break time, so thank you, Gabrielle. <laughs>